guys, welcome back to another clip of Schach Manuel Lernen. Today with the second round of the summer season. I had the white pieces and I started like always with e4. Um, here he played a quite unusual move, knight c6, which is a really flexible move that can lead into different variations with d5, d6, e5 or e5. Um, I played knight c3 because I didn't want d5 on the board. After e5, knight f3, knight f6, we have this classical position. Then I decided to go for my Belgrade gambit. So he captured knight d5. He played h6 and since I had it already a bit on online and by last classical game, I knew now how to play it better against. So bishop f4, he is forced to play d6, which keeps his bishop on f8 a bit more defensive. Then I captured pawn, bishop e7, and here the main line would be knight captures, queen captures, f3, d5, knight exchange, Bishop d3 and then, yeah, we kind of sacrifice a pawn, but we have bishop pair and better pawn structure, so it's quite balanced. However, in the game, I played knight b5, um, which leads to a different position. Here, only move is capturing here. If he captures here, it's automatically win due to the four. So he captured knight e5, bishop e2, normal development, a6, knight e4. This one is important because it controls the square for the bishop. So the bishop has only d7 as a square. And here I wasn't sure which plan I should follow. There's an option of rook e1, controlling the open e file of queen d2 with maybe one day sacrifice on h6, c4 for gaining a bit space. And my idea was also a typical idea in Belgrade Gambit to play a4 with the idea that rook a3, g3 and then attacking the king side. Bishop d7, then I played a5 to gain a bit more space. Also to fix his pawn on a6 on white that my bishop always have a target. And here I always thought he would play c6 and then capture, capture and then playing against this d6 pawn. But actually he never played it. He played rook e8, which is a natural move. And here I played queen d2. Rook a3 would have been also an option, I believe. But I followed the more classical approach with protecting the pawn. Rook d1, rook e1, and then c4, c5. Then I didn't want to trade the bishop. Queen e7. Then queen e4 which is attacking this pawn and at the same time he has some ideas of capturing here and then bringing out his bishop. So bishop f3 and then queen h4, g3, these are all forced moves. And now I thought how to continue. Um, if I don't play f4, which I played in the game, he will play knight e5 and maybe knight f3 afterwards. So I thought, okay, I grab a bit space with f4. Knight to e7. And here, first I calculated the line of bishop f2 that I give up this pawn, but at the end I win the piece. But luckily enough, I saw in advance that he can just play bishop g4 and I lose a pawn for nothing. 
However, this move is still possible because after capturing, I can play c4, knight goes back, and then I can capture on b7. Um, I played instead c4, which is a bit worse because now there's a lot of trades happening and at this moment notice so far there were no errors um, it was always balanced the game I played yeah he played bishop h3 and here I should simply have played bishop f2 capture capture and then we have uh, yeah Draw's position again. Um, I thought I have to keep the bishop, which was wrong idea. I played bishop f3, bishop g4, bishop h1. It's kind of wrong because the bishops will be anyway traded and then my king is not on g2 but instead on h1. So he played knight f5, bishop f2, um, first I calculated this move, you can pause the clip to find out why it's a mistake. It's a mistake because it loses on the spot. You can capture, 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 and then at the end this rook is hanging. So that would have been a terrible mistake. That's why I played bishop f2, also with the idea if I can trade the rooks off the board, I have at the end bishop uh, queen b4 and attacking his queen side. Because here I have space advantage and that's why I'm slightly better. He captured, so we traded a lot of things off the board. Here I played rook e3. Um, he offered the draw at somewhere at this point, but I was like, if someone can try it, I can try it. Objectively, it's a draw, but we will see later it's not that easy to play. So he captured bishop, then queen f5. Here, another idea is captured there, playing c6, queen e4, and like that. It's also a draw. He played queen f5, I doubled the rooks, queen d7. Now, here I was a bit worried that at some point he can play this move with the double attack. Played queen g2. If he plays it now, it's not a problem because I can play b3 and I won't lose the pawn or I get enough of activity. King f8. Now b3, and now we trade everything out of the board. And now we have a pawn end game with seven pawns, no double pawns, no isolated pawns, which is um, really interesting. You won't have it every day. And now we can combine with an end game lesson. At the end game, especially only with pawns, the kings are becoming the strongest pieces. So it's important to bring our king to the to the center. So I started with king f3 and now black has to decide already if he plays king e7 which allows me to play king e4 or to block my king on e4 so that he plays a5, f5. And after f5, I continued my path to the center. And now I have still slight of an advantage because I have here more space on the queen side. And here it was move 39. We still had a bit of time, so we could spend some seconds, minutes here. I decided for the approach h3 with the idea of playing maybe g4 and then doing here a bit something. He countered it with h5 
So g4 is out of the question. And now I played c5. It's the only winning approach. And here, yeah, it's quite nice endgame. Objectively, it's a draw. You just need to find the correct moves, as always. Um, I analyzed it also with my chess friends, and we were also not quite sure about the evaluation. In the game, I thought c6 is a draw, which is apparently not the case, um, because if we capture here, he can capture with pawn and then... Yeah, then in this case it's a uh, draw. Um, c6. However, we should, if we capture here, it's 1. And it needs a bit of deeper understanding. You need to know the tempi and who has to go out of the opposition. Opposition is when kings are in front of each other. So here we can capture, if he captures with pawn, he destroys his pawn structure. We play b4 to fix his pawn. And if black has to move his king, we can infiltrate his position and farm the pawns. So he can try h4, capture g6. Now it looks like white has to move his king, and then it's a draw, but we can sacrifice the pawn back. And now I mark it here, if black goes with green arrow here, I can infiltrate the position. If he plays um, the yellow arrow, then I can infiltrate the position here. So that's why if we go back, to this position here. C6 is not like I calculated, it's not a draw. Um, so he played King D8, it's still a draw. Um, here you have more or less two options. Either you capture or you move your pawn. The downside of moving your pawn forward like that is capture, capture. And then I have a protected past pawn. But that would have been the correct choice. Why? He can wait always with his king. And my only winning chances are here on the king side with a breakthrough. But the problem is if I go too far away, he can create himself a past pawn. And then I can also lose it if I over push it. He made natural move capturing, but that loses. Because now we have this constellation here. So he always needs to have an, an eye on this part. So king c8, king here, king back. And yeah, this is the game here. I played b4. <clears throat> and let's say if he plays this one, we can simply walk and we are faster and it's a queen and it's directly checkmate. So that's not possible for him. King to d8. The other option would have been g6. Now, here you need to know the square rule, like... If the pawn is, the, if the king is inside of this square, and if he does, we will win the game. I calculated it, and that's why it won the game. Um, let me check quickly where it is. Sorry for jumping around a bit. Yeah, here we have the position, like. If he would have played g6, we can play king f6, king c8, captures, and now we see here the 
square room but we are inside of we can enter the square and that's why it's a draw capture walking back and then we have too many pawns so he played king e8 b4 king to d8 captured and here he resigned because he can't defend this position again and yeah that was a wonderful victory um, it was not a lot of fireworks during this game but it was important to understand at this point to activate your kings um, and how endgame works that even with less pieces on the board only with pawns it's not getting easier that's why it's so fascinating about chess and I simply decided to push because I had here space advantage which allowed me this trying and yeah it worked so I was really happy and with this word and this wonderful pawn end game I wish you a great weekend take care and see you soon guys <laughs>